think this is real here on the spies. This little wick here, right on the open, it popped up. I'm, I'm not even sure if it's real. Uh, yes, it is. Right on the open yesterday, it popped up to 255. Um, came right back down into the resistance range, and then almost tagged 254, but um, it still is consolidating after a very big move. Very big move relative to the the low volatility we're in now um, at the high here. So. Um, Having alerts 254, 253, 85, just to make sure it continues to support at this consolidation. If it doesn't, certainly can play a break to the downside um, as we are up a lot. Uh, IWM, for the fourth time in fifth days, as I put in the notes, um, has tested this 149.40 area. So, and again, it's still consolidating also at the high. Um, just the last couple of days, spending time below 150. Um, not really showing any commitment from sellers to push it below the support, though, from the last the last week. But we have very well-defined levels here, support in the 149.30 to 149.50. The bottom, resistance 150, um, and then this area up here, 150.50. And we we'll look for breaks through those levels and then holds above or below those levels, a confirmation that we could be looking at um, some type of legitimate move. Um, okay, a few things in play, and then some pretty good second day plays, potentially. Um, CUDA, they, the numbers did not look particularly bad. Um, I have a bid down here in front of 23. It did not get hit. Let's take a look at the longer term. Let's look at the daily on it. I think they guided like a penny lower. So the question is, the guy to penny lower, what has it done this year? It's basically been above and below 22 and a half, most of the time above. So coming into earnings, it was bought. So maybe that's that might be part of the issue. Um, looks like people were anticipating they were going to report good numbers. So it ran, where did it go from? 24 people were buying it, it broke out above 24.50. So that kind of gives us an idea of it bounces back into this area. Um, the low here in the summer was around 22 and a half. So my thought was some of these people are caught buying it into the into the news. Maybe they would they would hit it down into here. I could get along. They're out, and then it just works its way back up to uh, $24 a share. That was my thought. That's already been down to 23 in the pre-market. I didn't get anything. Um, but I was still bidding there, and ideally I'd want to get it closer to 22.50 anyway um, for move back up to kind of see the initial down move in the after hours, went to 23.80. And people were buying it here at 24 because the number didn't seem that bad to them. Um, but now some people trapped a little bit higher. So hopefully those people will will get it to flush and put in its low right on the open in that first 15, 20 minutes. And we'll take advantage of a ride back up to this area here. And we'll see. Um, normally does under a million shares. Could, uh, just looking at the daily, could easily do two and a half, three million shares today. So it's enough liquidity. Spread shouldn't be that bad. Um, next one is FAST, which I feel like we talk about almost every quarter. Mainly because it reports at odd times when other companies aren't reporting, and it does have a tendency to move and overshoot. So let's look at the daily on this one as well. All right, so back in April, a couple quarters ago, it gapped down. It gapped down on earnings to 47 and a half. It really crushed it down to 40 here. I guess this is the last earnings day here based on this wild move. You can kind of see, get my get the picture here. Like <laughs> the last earnings day, it gapped to 42.60. They ripped it up to 46. Actually, now it opened up here at 46 and went all the way down to 41, which is insane. I'm pretty sure I tried to buy it at 43 or something. So this morning, it is, first of all, the numbers in line, revenue slightly above. 
It's offered at 43 and a half right now, which puts it inside of this area here. Clues at 44.70, already down 4% on pretty much nothing. Um, it's another one you probably want to buy in a flush on the open. You saw what at last quarter went from 46 all the way to 41 and change before it balanced. So uh, it can really move. But anything close to 42, I would um, definitely give it a shot on the long side. Um, even if I saw it, if it didn't flush on the open, it was just holding down in this area here and they're buying it, I'd, I'd give it a shot for a bounce back up to above 44. And you, uh, they announced the secondary, a billion dollars, smart. They uh, they announced it right after the close. It came off a couple of bucks. People who bought down at 40 in the after hours already rewarded with a dollar up move. We've got to put this in perspective, see why it makes so much sense that they did a secondary. This thing's been trending. It trended to the high 30s, and then recently we looked at it, I think, at 40. It failed there, but broke out above uh, a couple of days ago. It's a pretty clean break above the prior high. Um, and then they announced the secondary at the top. Smart company doing that, raising funds when their stock is so high. The size of the secondary is the equivalent of about three quarters of their, their um, actually less. It's uh, about, let's see, six, four. Actually, no, it is about 80% of that. I don't even know. It's about 25 million. <laughs> if they do the shares at $40, that's a billion bucks. It's 25 million shares. It trades 38 million shares a day. Um, so not that, it shouldn't be that difficult for it to absorb, but could create some decent price action, get people thinking about, wait, you know, they're issuing shares up here. They think maybe they think it's toppy. Um, highly unlikely that it would trade below this area right here. Um, you can see already buyers were willing to step in and buy it at 40. So I'm prepared to trade in both directions. Uh, I want to be a little bit careful about shorting it here at 41. I'd like to see it pop a little bit higher. Let's go to the five minute. You can see yesterday, intraday, it's come off to 40, 50 and ripped from 41. So I guess if it does fail here at 41, it's a good spot to be shorted. Hopefully it sells off. Um, close to where it was in the after hours here. The higher low in the pre-market here looks like around 40, 30. But it's extremely liquid. As I said, it trades around 30, 39 million shares a day. So you're never really risking uh, more than 10 cents if you get in at good prices. And the range, um, the ATR on this is a buck. So you know it's not unreasonable to think at least this, it could uh, at least have this, this range for the day. Maybe even overshoots to the upside here, comes a little bit lower. Um, but there should be at least two or three good trades in this one today. Um, could have easily put it at first on our list in terms of uh, um, low risk and anyone can trade it. Uh, okay, so second day stop. Walmart, wow. Um, you know, best up move we've seen in years in this one. Uh, here's the daily on it. It's obviously a clean breakout. If we look at the top in 2015, it had topped out here at 90. Um, and then after it topped out at 90, it spent some time, um, it gapped down below 85 to like 84.6 or something, which was the top yesterday, I guess. So, and then people were clearly, it, it was already extended, right? I mean, the stock was $78 a, a week or two ago. Um, I mean, I thought, I mean, I thought 80, Three and a half was extended. It got to, so it got to 8480. I had a pretty big short position on up there. Um, then when it came in, I flipped it to long. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm misremembering. I'm thinking of uh, I'm thinking of UAL. I did not have a big short position on up there. I actually after the initial failure at 84 and it pulled back and they started to hold. Um, I flipped it to long um, in this area right here at 84 and then got flat into this up move. Um, it did have, you know, a strong bid all day, um, and I mean, I guess what I'm thinking is on the open, if I could get a flush down closer to like 83, 80, 83, 65 here, I'd get long it again. 
Um, let's see where it is. So they're already bidding it up in the pre-market. So it may just be that 84X is the spot where it holds today. And if it takes out this, this area here, um, 85 is the most logical target. I don't know if it has much more upside than that. Today it is quite extended at this point. And it's okay if it, you know, if it fails here right in the pre-market and you see it flush below 84 and it comes back up and they hold the 84 offer, you can play it on the short side for a move back down to the low 83s. Um, you may need some time to digest this move. Uh, and then HMNY, which we had in our second day's technicals yesterday, I put it again because it's, it has gone so parabolic. And I couldn't locate any shares this morning to short it. Um, so again, we were sort of looking at it here. People wrote some longs up into this area here. Um, it has now doubled in the last two days. So it's likely to put in a top today. Um, that was the thought process yesterday. It would either top out yesterday or today. I want to go back even further. There we go. Um, so we go back to <laughs> 2005. In 2005, it went to $40 before going down to 10 So that's the history. So just, I mean, you can look at the wildness in the pre-market. It was, it was up at 32, went down to 27. It's now at the high. Um, it may even go pop right to 40 straight on the open and come back down to 35 and then consolidate and then start a downtrend. But um, we'll look for that, that you know, three, three, four dollar pullback from wherever it tops out, watch the consolidation and then look to see if it breaks to the downside. Um, 20 to 30 percent down move from wherever it tops out could be a reasonable assumption. So if it tops out at 36, um, that brings you down into like the 26 to 28 area for a down move. <clears throat> UAL. The UAL was the one that I was very big on the short side on the open as it went vertical into 69 and a half. Um, and what happened with that was it came off a dollar. I covered most of it. It went back up. I did some reshorting again, 69 and a half, and that was clean. It came off. Um, I don't remember where I covered the second time, but I think it actually was into 68 and then I flipped it long. I right? flipped it long and then sold it back into 68.50. And then I wasn't really watching it the rest of the day. Uh, but you can see the sellers started to assert control um, after this lower high made another lower high here, 68.70, and then um, 68.30, they were sold the rest of the day and eventually came off to 67 and a half. Look, is there news this morning? It's gapping up. Maybe some some of the hedge funds who looked at you know the numbers from yesterday and the guides um, put in some buy orders this morning, so we're gapping up. So I would use the 69. Um, kind of as an inflection this morning, 60, 67 and 75, excuse me, 68, 75, 69, potential resistance, and use 68 as uh, potential support, and then the low from yesterday afternoon, 67, 50 or so. Um, it's again, it's another one that's just made a big move. Um, we want to see if it can kind of, you can use these levels from yesterday to, uh, to trade it until it has its next bigger, bigger picture move. Uh, and then finally, ANAB, which I put last, not because it can't move a lot, but because uh, this spread is incredibly wide. Um, so um, this is a good example, actually. I said yesterday in the morning, I, mean, I thought the percentages were with such a big gap, you could look for profit taking. Um, in those situations, usually in the first 30, 45 minutes, um, if you don't get the profit taking uh, and it holds that gap and then breaks to the upside, you can play it for, for a long, long move. It had that upside break at what time? 1030, so about an hour after the open. Um, and then it just held the bids above the morning high for uh, about 40 minutes. So this is textbook. Um, there was nothing about this price action after the open. Again, the odds are, and we'll say this every time, when something gaps up 50% like that, you look for profit taking on the open. Um, if after this quick drop here, the opening drive takes it up and it refuses, you know, it did fail at 60 here. So for a while it looked like maybe it could roll over and would be a decent short. Um, and I did remember short it into $60 here. After it topped out and showed that wick, this is, I got short on this top of this red bar. And came off a couple of dollars. I was able to cover some after it came off a couple of dollars, but then eventually broke to the upside um, and trended, geez, trended up about eight dollars. So this morning, you got to be careful with it. But sixty and a half here is the first spot I would look at, and then sixty-seven. 67, a little bit of a safer spot to look at, at along, because um, you do have the pre-market or the after-hours high, which is $5 higher. 
you do have it breaking out from there at the end of the day with heavy volume. So people clearly were interested in buying this thing above 67. Look at I mean, look at this volume. Um, it also did attract more sellers. That's why you had such volume, high volume there. Um, but that would be a spot where I'd feel pretty good. If I lost money buying it into a pullback 67, 66, 80, and I had to hit it out below 66 dollars, uh, I wouldn't feel that bad about that um, because of the upside to the after hours high. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20 year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.